Hi there. Last time we saw that lots of the waste which we make gets taken to a huge hole in the ground called a landfill site. We can't just keep throwing our rubbish into these big holes, covering it up and then forgetting about it. It's such a waste. Well, there are loads of better things we can do with our rubbish and a big one is called recycling. Now I'll tell you what, I'll show you. Come on. Outside my house, I've got a black bin, but I've also got a green bin. Now we know that the stuff which gets put into the black bin gets taken to a landfill site and just rots away. But do you know what happens to the stuff which gets put into your green bin? The lorry backs into this warehouse and unloads all of the materials for recycling. Here they sit in this large pile awaiting collection. A large JCB pushes all the rubbish closer together so that it takes up less space. Next, the materials are loaded into a truck. This takes the waste to the next part of the journey. And here it is. This is the Material Recovery Facility, or MRF, which is a posh name for the place where the waste is sorted out into different materials. Here you can see a JCB scooping up materials from a huge pile and loading them onto a conveyor belt. The waste then moves along with this conveyor belt and the men that you can see at the top are picking out all of the really large pieces of card and plastic. The waste then passes through this giant rotating sieve called a trommel. All of the small pieces pass through the holes and the large pieces fall out to the end and continue their journey into a shaker at the top of this conveyor belt which separates plastic bottles and cans from any paper and card. The paper and card falls down here and goes into this room where the men are checking to see if there is anything on the conveyor belt that is not paper. Here you can see a man picking cardboard off the conveyor belt and throwing it down a chute. It falls down the chute and lands in these bays down here and will be gathered later to be sent off for recycling. The conveyor belt from a room where the men were picking out card should now contain only paper. So it falls down here and goes into a baling machine which presses the paper into large cubic blocks that are convenient for transporting to recycling factories. The small things meanwhile pass through another trommel. You should be able to hear the tinkle of cans in there and are hand sorted just like you saw before. But here is one of the best parts of the process. You should be able to see magnets moving over the conveyor belt which are picking up all of the steel food cans. Let's take a closer look. Okay, let's have a rewind. There, did you see one jump? And a second can. The magnet makes separating steel very simple. And finally, for something very clever. This is an eddy current separator. See how most of the waste falls straight off of the end of a conveyor belt. But this machine makes aluminium cans jump up and over the little barrier. Let's slow things down. Time for a rewind.
See the toucans flicking up into the air and somersaulting over the barrier? Yippee! Finally, the cans are all collected together and crushed into bales, ready to be transported to a recycling factory. So, for the next stage, we are actually going to see how the material is recycled, how it is made into something else. Here, I'm going to demonstrate to you how we recycle paper. So here I have some waste paper, and I'm going to put this into a blender. Next, I must add some water. Put the lid on top. And we're ready to blend. Paper is made from many tiny, tiny fibers of wood, all stuck together. Here, we're blending the scrap paper so that all of the fibers are torn apart, so we can then put them back together again and make new paper. So here we have some lovely pulp. Hmm, look at that consistency. And now to put this into some water. Next, we must get the remaining water out of the paper. So we put a J-cloth on it like this. See the water coming through there? Squeeze it down so it absorbs the water. And then carefully peel it off. And then wring it out. Then put it somewhere to dry. Once the paper is dry, peel it off the screen and it's ready to use. So, recycling is where we melt down the material and then turn it into something else. But why do we recycle? What's the point? I mean, why should I even be bothered? Let me think. Okay, I can think of three reasons why recycling is good. Reason one. Last time we looked at how to make one steel can, we had to dig up lots of raw materials. To make one ton of steel, you need two tons of iron ore, one ton of limestone, and one ton of coal. If we just throw the can away into a landfill, Next time we need a can, we will have to dig up more raw materials. But if we recycle, we can use the same piece of metal over and over and over again. That means that we do not have to dig up so many raw materials. So all the plants and animals can go on living and making lots of nice air for us to breathe. Hooray! So reason number one is that recycling helps us to protect natural environments. Reason number two. For reason number two, you need to know that it takes a lot of energy to make something from scratch using raw materials. But to make this drinks can, by recycling all drinks cans, takes much less energy. In fact, by recycling a single drinks can, you can save enough energy to power a television for three hours. And why is it important to save energy? Because making energy creates pollution. So, to make this food can from scratch using raw materials would create this much pollution. But to make this food can by recycling old food cans would make only this much pollution. So, recycling 
helps to reduce energy use and therefore reduces pollution. Reason 3 And finally, reason number 3. As we all know, when we recycle something, it gets turned into something new, which is wonderful. But it also means that that piece of rubbish does not end up in the landfill. So, the more we recycle, the less rubbish ends up in the landfill site. So, reason number three is that recycling cuts down on landfill space. So, altogether, recycling is great as it saves the natural environment, saves energy and reduces pollution, and cuts down on landfill space. Now, why ever would anybody not recycle? Exactly. So, if we look at the recycling process, it is... Put the material into the green bin. It gets picked up by the bin lorry. Taken to be sorted into different materials. Each material is then recycled and turned into a new product. The product goes to a shop and then a customer buys it from the shop and takes it home. And the material can go around and around, over and over and over again. But recycling will only work if things move round every step of the cycle. And that's why we have to make sure that not only do we put things into our recycling bin, but also that if we need to buy something, we buy things that are recycled wherever possible. Otherwise, the cycle just doesn't work. Look, if we don't buy recycled products, then the shops will stop ordering recycled things from factories. Factories then wouldn't want to get materials from MRFs. MRFs wouldn't want rubbish from bin lorries. And so bin lorries wouldn't pick up our recycling. And the whole thing would just fall apart. But it's not hard to buy recycled these days. There's no end of recycled products you can buy. For example, recycled pencils made from old vending cups, recycled paper, made from old paper, recycled clipboards made from old juice cartons, compost bins made out of recycled plastic bottles, recycled toilet paper made out of just normal paper. And 25 of these plastic bottles makes a fleece jumper like this. It's lovely and soft and warm. So have a look and see which recycled products you can find. So all that remains now is for us to make sure that we do our recycling at home. And to make that easier, I've made up something called the four step plan. And it goes like this. Step one is S and S stands for squash and wash the squash. Washing stuff makes it easier to recycle and stops your bin from stinking. Squashing your rubbish means that you can get more in your bin. The second step is T for tell everyone. Lots of people have recycling bins, but not everyone knows what can go in them. Why not put a sign up in your kitchen so that everyone in your house knows what can be recycled? The third step is extra bin. Sorting out rubbish when it's already in a bin is disgusting and smelly. So put two bins in your kitchen. One for landfill as normal and one for recycling. This way you can sort your rubbish as you go along. And the last step is P for put it out. If you forget to put your green bin out, you might not be able to squeeze any more rubbish in it until the next collection. There should be a sticker on your bin telling you when it's going to be collected or you could call your council to find out. I just keep an eye on when my neighbours put their bins out. So let's just check that again. S T E P. S is for squash, T is for tell everyone, E is for extra bin and P is for put it out. As long as you remember that, how could you fail to be anything but an expert recycler? So I hope you'll do your recycling and next time we're going to talk about something a little bit more earthy. But in the meantime, good luck and goodbye. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.